everyone and welcome to another very exciting complete growing guide here on the MI Gardener channel. In this episode we're going to be talking about how to grow mangoes. So this is probably one of the most requested growing guides we've ever had on this channel and easily probably three or four times a week we get we get someone saying Luke I've seen all your growing guides I'd love to see you do mangoes so as you know we love growing tropical plants I got a whole ton of tropical plants behind me um, and I've done growing guides on all of them as well uh, but mangoes was one we never did a growing guide on and I love growing them because they're a super fun house plant to grow a little challenging I will admit but very very fun to grow and so, uh, and mangoes are my, my favorite fruit of all time. So if this thing ever happens to fruit, well, it'll be a bonus. But uh, this, is a, this is actually a Glen mango. We got it from a seedling when it was about, oh, about a foot and a half, two feet tall. So it's grown, it's at least doubled in size, but it's put on a ton of new growth, which is great. Because starting off this growing guide, I wanna just preface this and let everybody know that if you're growing, in anything other than zone 11 or zone 12, you're going to have some issues. Um, mangoes are super, super tropical, and even zone 10 is, is a little bit iffy, but still zone 10 is, uh, is adequate for growing mangoes as well. They are they're super tropical. And so here in zone six, uh, five-ish, six, I guess, uh, depending on where you're at in Michigan, um, right now we're in zone, uh, zone six. So in zone six, you're going to have some issues just no matter what you do. It's just not adequate uh, conditions ever. Um, when you move it indoors, it's, there's shock from, from there not being enough sunlight and then it has to adapt to that. It will adapt, um, but it just, it'll go through some shock. When you bring it outdoors, it'll go through some shock because it goes from the shade to the sun really quickly and it'll, it'll drop some leaves. Um, the temperatures, I mean, the temperature swings here in Michigan are just so erratic. Uh, the humidity is not what it is in a tropical place. So um, all we can do is just give it the best conditions possible. And, and the secret that I can tell you is as long as growth is being promoted and the, the new growth is outgrowing the, you know, the stressed dropped leaves, you're going to do fine um, because what happens is if you have let's say three new leaves and you drop one leaf as long as there's as long as there's a forward motion the plant will continue to grow and and it really won't ever care that it's dropping leaves it'll just take much longer to reach full maturity than uh, had it had all of its leaves so that's all I can say about that because we get people all the time that freak out. They say, my, my plant's dropping so many leaves. I say, well, is it at least growing? I say, well, yeah, it's growing, but it's dropping so many leaves. I'm like, okay, all right, well, as long as it's, as long as it's outgrowing that, that leaf drop, it's going to be fine. And that's just one thing you're going to have to understand about growing mangoes in, in a totally non-tropical region is it's going to be at least some, somewhat stressed and that stress will cause leaf drop. Um, so now, Getting into the growing guide, what I wanted to talk about is the pot size, since I do think that is the most important aspect of this growing guide. Tropical plants, all your tropical plants are super, super, super prone to root rot, and you never, ever, ever want to overpot them. And by overpotting, it means giving them too large of a pot. I keep my mango currently in a one and a half gallon trade pot. And you're probably thinking, Luke, you're crazy, and I'll say, no, I'm not. Uh, the reason is because you want the plant to be root bound. It sounds super counterproductive, but it's really true. If you give it too large of a pot, they're used to super well draining soil. And I mean, ridiculously well draining soil. And so if you have any amount of moisture that stays in that soil that shouldn't be there, the plant's gonna let you know it's gonna drop a ton of leaves and you might even kill it. So I always err on the side of caution in the sense that I always, always under pot rather than over pot. And you'll know because you can check the bottom of the pot and when you start to see roots starting to coil around the bottom of the drainage holes, you get time to transplant. Um, so that is uh, the, the most important thing. The next most important thing is fertilizing. Mangoes are super, super nitrogen hogging. And one of the things that people often do that make a big mistake of is they just don't fertilize enough. And that is one of the biggest reasons, well, I guess second biggest reason why they kill it. First reason is they put it in too big of a pot and they just, they think, you know, I don't want to transplant it, so I'll just plant it once. Big mistake. The second reason why they, the second most common reason why they kill it is they just don't fertilize enough. Mangoes 
are some of the most heavy nitrogen feeding plants besides probably like avocados. Um, they need a ton of nitrogen. And so when you, when you got your plant growing and it's doing well, the only reason it's going to continue doing well is if you continue to fertilize it. And so when we first put it in our pot, we give it a well-balanced fertilizer. We use Trifecta Plus as we do with every plant here uh, on the MI Gardener channel. But that Trifecta Plus has a, a well-balanced uh, assortment of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, micronutrients, and trace minerals and things like that. But what will happen is the plant will use up the nitrogen much faster than the rest of the stuff. So we will come in and every two months we will supplement with either blood meal or a fish emulsion or Revive RX, any type of just pure, basically pure plant available nitrogen uh, and not a whole lot of other stuff because the, the phosphorus and potassium that'll stay in the soil for a while and we usually refertilize with Trifecta Plus just once a year because the other nutrients, they take a while to be absorbed. Um, but the nitrogen is the big one that people just don't have enough of. And one way you know you don't have enough is if the, the leaves start turning yellow and they just seem kind of anemic and not very uh, thick and rigid and they just kind of are, are limp. The next thing that you'll notice you're, you're running out of nitrogen is that the, the growth on top, obviously when it's new, it's small but it should always be getting larger. Your leaves should never be getting smaller when they're, when they're full size. So obviously when they're new growth, they seem small, but you can tell when the, when the growth has stopped because the, the growth will turn super dark, shiny green. When they're young, obviously you can see here, it's light green and when they're mature, it's dark green. And so when they turn dark green like that, if they're smaller on top than they are down here, you gotta say, hold on though. I need, I need more nitrogen because that is slowing down growth. And remember, we need to outgrow that stress. We need to, we need to it's, it's a race, it's always chasing you and you gotta, gotta stay one step ahead. So uh, that's the fertilizing component of it. The next thing is sunlight. This plant does not need a whole ton of sun. Giving it full sun is great, but the big but to that is that they are actually uh, what you kind of consider a, an understory plant. Uh, they have in rainforest, they have big canopies, and then below that, they have the understory. So these plants will do just fine with about four to six hours of sun. Any less than that's gonna be a problem, um, but four to six hours is, is right in that range of, of sunlight. So we put them right in our sliding door there when it comes time to uh, bring them indoors, and they get great sun. They get about six hours of sun there. Um, really any good south facing uh, window is going to be wonderful. Um, the next thing that you're going to have to, uh, to know when you're growing mangoes is when it comes to watering. Like I said, uh, watering kind of ties into the soil in the sense that they do not like a whole lot of water. Having them dry out, they're used to arid climates, so having them dry out is important. Um, and so when we have these plants here, uh, we always make sure that before we water, we take our finger, stick it down. If it's damp, if we even feel any remote dampness, about two inches down, about to our, our first knuckle there, don't even, don't even think about watering um, because it's just going to have too much water there. Um, the next thing, the next thing is soil type. So when we transplant, having a right soil type also ties into pot size, not, you know, not having enough uh, not having all that extra soil to hold on to the moisture. Also watering, don't have too much water, but also the soil type. I always, 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 and folks, when I say always, I never deviate. It is one part potting mix, a really good quality potting mix, we use pro mix, to one part sand. Having that sand is critical. If you don't add the sand, forget about it. You just, you could basically take this and throw it in the compost pile. The sand is what will add your drainage that will help the plant to, uh, to not have that water standing around its roots. And you just need it in order for the plant to do well. The next thing is pH. pH is pretty simple. It is not super finicky. Just make sure the soil is slightly acidic. In its natural environment, it does have a slightly acidic soil. So we make sure that the pH is right around 6.0 to 6.5, somewhere in there, it's gonna do great. Um, if it starts going higher than seven, you're going to definitely have some issues. So make sure that it's slightly acidic and you're going to do just fine. 
The final part of this growing guide is temperature. Now, temperature is a super obvious one, so that's why it's last, because it's the least important, and that is just make sure it stays warm. Tropical plants do not like snow. They do not like frost. They don't like cold weather. They just need to be in something hotter than, uh, I'd say, probably 60 degrees. Anything hotter than 60 degrees, you're going to do great, and your plant is going to thrive. Obviously, the warmer, the better, up to about 100 degrees. If it's any hotter than 100 degrees, you're gonna have some issues as well. So uh, just make sure that um, kind of that uh, 60 to 100 degree range is, is kept. You're going to do great. When we bring it in, kind of the temperature that we start looking at is right around low 60s. As soon as it starts dropping below low 60s or, or even kind of mid 50s, um, you're going to start having some stress on the plant will pop it indoors. Um, it will do great in, in low to mid 60s, just, just fine. Um, but you don't want those lows to be in the mid 50s or, or below or, or below or, or, or below. And <laughs> it's been a long, long day. Um, so uh, if it goes into those mid 50s, we bring it indoors. It's just better to err on the side of caution with these mangoes because they'll go from healthy to dead in like that. So that's really all there is. And I say really all there is, I don't mean to say that it's like a super easy plant, like I said, but that is all there is to growing mangoes. And obviously use your grower's intuition. Do, you know, do your research about your area. Um, you gotta make sure that you, that you read your plant because if this growing guide, it is a definite, definitely more of a hands-on plant and you can follow this growing guide to a T and, and it should do well. But sometimes you might need to inter, kind of intervene and, and give it something a little bit better uh, because, because maybe something's just not working. Um, so, uh, so just constantly look at the plant, look at how it's doing, and just remember that the biggest thing is that if it's outgrowing that stress, it's going to be fine. Um, you, you, it, it will be stressed, it just will be. Uh, but if, if it's growing and it's outgrowing the leaf drop, you're gonna be fine. Um, so that's all there is. Uh, I know people are gonna ask about pruning. Don't worry, you won't have to prune it for a long time. They are a slower growing plant. Uh, this plant put on about 12 inches of growth over the course of this entire year. They grow the fastest when they're young um, and, and they kind of just slow down. Uh, this is a grafted mango, so it's grafted to be a semi-dwarf. Tops out at about six and a half to eight feet. Um, those are really good for inside um, pruning. Really, I mean, just make sure it's manageable to, to move. You can prune them, but honestly, in my opinion, I got a tree that's going to, to stay manageable for me. And so uh, obviously I'm, I don't want to defoliate because as I just said, the leaf drop, the, the leaf drop is defoliation enough. And if I come in here and prune, that's like taking away all of that growth that it just put energy into. So uh, I personally don't prune. I would not recommend you prune, uh, but you can if, if it gets too crazy. So uh, when it gets to that point, Send me a message and, uh, and I'll let you know if you can go ahead and prune. Uh, just general rule of thumb, just, just don't touch it um, and it'll do fine. So as always, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. If you did enjoy this growing guide, remember to share with a friend, hit that like button. If you have not yet subscribed, click that subscribe button. We've got a ton of awesome content coming at you every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, and I do hope that you're enjoying it. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. Bye.